to the workshop. Uh, I'm Brian Gardner, Principal Developer Advocate at WP Engine. And today we're going to be talking about mastering homepage design. Uh, as a designer and somebody who loves the WordPress block editor, uh, this is fun for me to do because uh, it allows me to showcase how far the editor has come and how cool it can be used to design various homepages or even inner pages, depending on how you want to look at it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen, and I'm just going to kick things off so that we have time for everything. Uh, I will keep an eye on the chat uh, as I'm able to, so feel free to just pop some questions in. And again, in between each section, we'll go ahead and uh, look for uh, questions that might be there. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Quick uh, thumbs up, everybody, or in the chat. Let me get the chat over there. Uh, sorry, everybody. There we go. Uh, thumbs up if you can see my screen. Does somebody drop that in the chat? That'd be great. Eagle raises his hand. Awesome. Uh, okay, so I'm going to close out of these two tabs because I sent you those links. So this is what we're going to be building today. I'm on local right now because uh, it allows me to kind of mess around and, and not mess up the live demo uh, of this. And so this is a sample homepage using the Frost theme and kind of represents sections that are kind of historically seen on a you know marketing or brochure uh, website. So I'm going to go ahead and just start building through this. Uh, I'm going to do quick copies because it allows me to do this faster. So I am here in the block editor, and I've just created a new page, which I'm going to hit save here. Uh, with Frost, Frost comes with a template called no title. And what that allows the template to do is re remove the post title or the page title from the page. So over here, I'm just going to set up. That's the first thing I'll do is just select the no title template. Uh, save draft. And OK. so. This is what it looks like right now. This is out of the box with just the, the regular page template. This will be gone um, once we um, actually do a refresh. So this is what we've got now. We've removed that title from the page. And so we're going to build everything in between. And so what we want to do here is we want to set up this hero section, which is basically made of a heading, a paragraph, and then a couple buttons. So I will literally just go into the editor. Uh, and I, what I typically like to do, uh, I like to wrap everything in a group. Uh, and especially clicking here, you can see these are full width backgrounds. And so you really need a group in between each of these sections. And so I'm going to start with a group. Uh, and as you can see here, I'm going to go full width on my group. Uh, and usually what I do is in the groups, I'll set the background color on the get-go because we're going to use the black. And then I'll just set up the padding just so it's always there. Uh, generally on home pages, I usually uh, throw... 100 pixels top and bottom just to give it some breathing space. Uh, right here, you can see the padding control on the group, uh, top and bottom. And then over here on the side, I usually just add 30 pixels. You can see kind of how that lit up on the side there. Uh, that ensures when you're viewing on mobile that there's a little bit of a gutter. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to add the heading. And because I copied and pasted it, you can see we need to change the color from black to white. I'm going to go ahead and center it. Uh, and I did mention in the sign up that we're going to do a little bit of SEO here, not a ton, but just for best practices, uh, because this is the hero section of your homepage. Traditionally, people use that as a H1 because that's the most important thing they want people to see. Uh, and so we've got the heading here and you can see that needs to be bigger. So I'm going to just go ahead and um, change the size and the font. We want to make it a little bit sleeker. Now, inside of the group, uh, there's a setting over here called layout. And what that does is, is it says, with it checked, everything that sits inside of here, use the content width, which defined by the Frost theme is 640 pixels. We want that to be a little bit wider so we can get this onto two lines. And so we can actually type in whatever um, amount we want. And so in this case, 960. And I realized that maybe we want that to be a little bit bigger. I'm going to go ahead and hit save so we can see what this looks like. So you can see that we're, we're just about there. Uh, and so I'm going to copy the paragraph below it just to make it easy. Get to the end of the block. Hit pit. Oops. Wants me to add another heading. So click on group. That way we can do a paragraph comes in a list view for the win, right? 
There we go. We want the paragraph text to be white. And we want this. And I think I've got a bunch of rogue. There we go. OK, so list view here is something that can be super helpful as you're trying to navigate through the block editor as you need to sort of do some things. Uh, I'm going to close that now. So I'm going to go to the end of the paragraph, and I'm going to just enter the buttons block. Uh, and what text do we have here? We've got get started and learn more. So get started, hit enter, learn more. Uh, and the first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead here to the alignment of the buttons. We're going to center them. And then you can see both of them are solid. And in our demo, we've got sort of like a ghost button, which is an outline. Uh, Frost has what's called a block style here for outline, where you can select that in the individual button. So I'm going to do that by default. What it does is it goes to the text. We want that to be white. And so therefore, uh, we end up with white text. Now, as an example, if we wanted it to be gray or green, you can choose the colors. It's using sort of current color for the border. Uh, and so in this case, we've got that. Now you can see what we've got there. I will hit save and we'll update the page. And we are just about there. Some spacing things, but that's not a big deal. So that's our hero section. I'm just kind of clicking back and forth so you can see what we've done quickly. Uh, if anybody has any questions on what I did there or how I did it, uh, feel free to ask. Uh, I do want to point out one thing. Maybe we want a little bit more separation here between the paragraph and the buttons. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is just select the buttons block and then come over here to settings. And you can see there's a margin. And then if you go to top, uh, you can add top margin to that buttons block. Now, each of these steps in the scale that I'm using, Frost has it set up specifically uh, to be 20 pixel increments. And uh, that's also sort of done fluid. So if you get like 100 pixels, uh, it also clamps down so that as you uh, are on mobile, that 100 pixels kind of scales down. So it's not a true 100 pixels, but it's 100 pixels at max. And so uh, as you can see here, as I slide these, uh, we've got t-shirt sizing for uh, the spacing. So we got extra small, small, medium, large, and extra large. So you got 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100. So uh, every block theme has its capability of setting that up on their own. You could set up using different uh, numbers or units if you want also. So uh, I'll just slide this back down to 40. We'll do a quick refresh. Gives it a little bit more space. So I don't see any questions. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep going if that's good with everybody. Uh, so we are now here. Do a quick copy of the text. Down here in this section, again, uh, we'll go into the editor. Uh, even though it's a white background, I still like to wrap everything in a group. And so uh, we've got the group. We're going to make that full width. Uh, now you can see there's a little bit of spacing here above the, the block. And that's because uh, WordPress block themes have what's called block gap. And what it does is it automatically uh, adds a gap in between sort of top level blocks. So in this case, you've got the top group and then this group. Easiest way, and I always do this generally also, is just go to margin top and just zero it out. So that way things line up uh, as they should. Uh, and so since I'm in here, similarly, I'm going to just set up my group padding. And then uh, again, we've got a heading. This one can stay in H2 because we want to use kind of semantic. Uh, and so what do we have here? So we want to we want people to design with Frost. So this is the heading. We're going to go ahead and center it. Uh, we'll make this a little bit bigger, maybe 48 pixels or maybe even 60. And I'm going to paste the text. And so uh, after that, uh, you can see that there's a little bit less space. Again, uh, because these are two blocks, WordPress by default uh, adds what's called the block gap. And so uh, what we can do, and I often do this, is select the heading and the paragraph. And I also group them together um, just so that they're kind of grouped together. And then if you go over here to styles and then scroll down, you can see block spacing. So what that does is, is it allows you to change the spacing with all the elements that are inside of that group. Uh, and so you can see here, this is spacing. So maybe I want to make it extra small, which is 20 pixels instead of 30. So it just brings it a little bit closer. Or if I even wanted to go down to 10, I could do 10. 
Um, so, but for now, we'll just keep it at the 20. And now the next section is the interesting section because this is like, wow, that's that's kind of a cool design. They didn't realize you could build that with blocks. Uh, but yes, in fact, this is built with blocks. And so I'm just going to go through systematically and we'll do that. So we are inside of our group. Uh, we want to add a columns block because that's how we're going to build this. Uh, and so a uh, couple of shortcuts that I'll walk through. Uh, so I've built a columns block and I just by default just pick two columns. Now we want four. Uh, and so I'm over here on the right hand side and you can see you can change the columns. And again, you see this feels kind of skinny and that's because by default it's taking that uh, 640 pixels content width. Uh, but because I've got the group block selected, I can go right here and I can select this to be wide width. And then that spans the wide width of Frost, which is 1,250 pixels. Uh, also, you can see the spacing in between these columns. This is the block app I referred to. Uh, and since I've already got this highlighted, I'm just going to go ahead and change that because here we don't want any gap. We want these to butt up next to each other. And so what I'll do here is change the spacing. Again, I zeroed it out. So therefore that gap went away. Uh, if you wanted to add more gap, you could, but so we've got that set up. Uh, I'm going to actually just go ahead and set background colors for each one. So we've got that, then we've got light green, dark green, and then the black. So I'm going to, um, each column, although let me check this out. Cause this is I want to see if I, I think I put everything inside of a group. Nope, I didn't. Perfect. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and set the background color of this column. And then each one will get a background color. And this one goes to black. Okay, so I'm going to copy this. So we've got zero, 01 interior, uh, a little bit of paragraph, and then uh, a link. So I'm just going to go inside of each one. Uh, we'll just say this is going to be zero one interior uh, that and then learn more. All right, so we're going to take what's here and move that. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is add spacing around it. You can see, obviously, uh, there's no spacing inside of this column. So if you select the column down here in the breadcrumb to make sure you've got it selected, uh, you can go in here and change the spacing. So this is the top and bottom spacing. This is the left and right spacing. Um, and so you can see uh, what I'm also going to do in the spirit of making sure this is all good. I'm just going to go ahead and just sort of format. Now, I want to show you another one I'm done here with this in particular. It's actually sort of a shortcut what we could have done here. Uh, and I'll show that as well. Okay, so now we've got the spacing all set up. Um, and this is just going to, you're just going to go through and I don't remember exactly what size it was, but, uh, you can go through and just sort of format the text of each one. Um, maybe we want the appearance to make this a little bit thicker. And then this is a paragraph, uh, back over to typography, uh, letter case allows you to uppercase and we want the font size to be a little bit smaller. And then this also needs to be a little bit smaller. Uh, so this is just going to be brought down and this also. I'm going to go ahead and just set this as a fake link. Now you can see in between all of these things is a whole bunch more space. And again, that has everything to do with uh, the block gap that's automatically applied inside of that column. So each spacing is 30 pixels. So if you select the column, go back to styles and go to block spacing. Uh, you can change the spacing. So let me, uh, maybe we'll use extra small. Now this right here, there's a lot of spacing because it's a big font size uh, and the line height is being picked up. So I'm gonna um, just change that to, to one. And then I'll go through and align center everything because that's how we've got it in the demo. I'm gonna go ahead and save just so we can see how things look. Uh, so the, the styling might not be exactly the same, but oh, actually, I did left align everything. Well, there you have it. Let me undo that. All right, so we've got what's basically the same thing um, here. Maybe 
So instead of going through and doing all of that all over again, an easier way to do that, especially if you're going to kind of have things that are like repeatable, is you could actually take this column, select it, and then hit duplicate. And what it does is it duplicates that column, as you'll see happening here. Uh, and it adds it to what you've already kind of got in there. So uh, what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to duplicate it all four times because it's easier to do that. I'm going to take these three extra ones that we created and I'm going to delete them. And so what you can do here is just go in and then change everything like that. So we want to change the text to white. So this is a quicker way to... Um, to do that rather than setting up all the columns and then typing in everything. So uh, WordPress is great in that it allows you to have that sort of du oops, the duplication, uh, which I use all the time. Because then what you can do is you've got it all set up. You know, you can change the each section. Oops. And of course, I won't go through the, all of the, the text updates, uh, but you can see how easy it is to then take something that's repeatable and duplicate it across and just sort of uh, tweak some Things. So I will go ahead and save this. And we can now see we've kind of got our one, two, three, four section. Uh, again, I want to take a quick moment. Uh, yes, Laura points out. Uh, similarly, um, if you have a group or a column and there's you've got styles applied to it, you can also, I'll do that really quickly. You can do this option, which is copy styles. So any styles that are applied to that column, block app, padding, uh, colors and stuff like that, you could just copy styles and then go to a different column and then hit paste styles. And it would just sort of grab that uh, and take it over for you. Laura, thank you for pointing that out. Uh, lots of little tricks that uh, once you get into the editor, you can, um, that just helps expedite the development and the workflow of it. So uh, that being said, we'll save draft, take a quick refresh. Uh, and now we have this section. So again, going to take a break for a moment to see if anybody has questions uh, specifically around either of the two sections that have been built so far. Um, one thing I did notice is that on top of this set of columns, there's a lot more spacing here. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and add top margin to that just to give that some spacing. Maybe we want to do that. All right, I don't see any questions. So if that's true, I'm just going to keep on rolling. Uh, so now we've got this section. Uh, so Laura asked, are the numbers a heading and what order? Um, let me see. Um, the real version. No, I just, you know, this is sort of uh, six to one, half dozen to another. Um, I actually used a heading for this section because I felt like the numbers were a little bit less important and descriptive. So I left that a paragraph. Uh, so, so showing uh, right now, I've, I did this as a paragraph here, uh, but WordPress editor has what's called the transform block. So you're inside of this and maybe I want to transform that from a paragraph to a heading, in which case then that's what it does. And you do have to go back um, and then add the style back to it. So uh, if I were to hit save and come down here, you can see that um, this is now, well, I, it came in as an H2, but because we want semantics, this is your H2 up here. And if we're looking for SEO, this here, we would probably want to just make an H3. Um, how do you add the arrow to the learn more link? Oh, that is a just a character code. I just, if you, uh, let's see if it's here. Yeah, if you can see in my source code down here in my inspector, all it is is just literally an arrow. Uh, so I just copied it and if you wanted to do that, you could just paste it as an arrow. Uh, there are other ways to do that. If you wanted to do do sort of like an SVG or something like that, you could, uh, we won't get into this here, but you could take the paragraph, uh, put that in a row block and have just to the right of it, like an image or an SVG that you put next to it if you wanted to do something different, uh, so on. So yes, easy wins. Um, I, I am a designer before a developer, so I under engineer as much as I can. Uh, and so usually I'm like, well, oh, this looks good enough for an arrow. I'll just use the character code. So, uh, that being said, let's go on down to the next section. Again, I'll just copy this. 
Uh, so this is a, a relatively easy section to build. Uh, we'll go down here. We're going to, oops, hang on a second. Okay, so down here, we're going to add our group. We want to make it full width. And again, it gets that block gap applied. So we just go zero it out. You'll see it slide up. Uh, we're going to go ahead. I'm just going to throw. Actually, this might be the row block. Yeah. Okay. So group is okay. So we're going to have a row inside of the group. Uh, so we're going to grab inside of the group what's called a, let me get down there, sorry. What's called the row block, which is sort of like a group. Um, what it allows you to do is do a paragraph here. Um, and we want to take the row and also align it wide so that, oops, not wide. We want full width. I feel like something's up here. Okay, so 1200 pixels. Oh, I know why. What we did not do, as I often forget, is add the padding to the group. That's why it's up along there. Okay, uh, so we've got the text and uh, we want to add buttons. And we've got get started and learn more, much like we did up at the top. And you see formatting that looks off. And I'll explain to you what is going on. All right, so save draft. I'm going to go into list view so you can see. Uh, so inside of the row block, we've got two things. We've got paragraph and we've got buttons. And what the row block does is uh, it allows you, similarly to a group block, is to sort of wrap around it, but do some things inside of it that are um form uh formatable so uh, the first thing i'm going to do here is you can see i've got the paragraph block selected and i want to specify the width of that i only want that to let's just let's start with 720 uh, i don't remember exactly what i did here i'll just go in there and check yep 720 um so what that does is it take it says take this paragraph and make the maximum width of that paragraph, 720 pixels. And what that does is it allows us to sort of keep this look without it just going all the way up to the buttons. And so uh, we've done that. I'm gonna go ahead and change the height of this. We'll start with that. Um, line height in this case. Mark, I see your question. I'll get to it in just a second. 1.5. Uh, and we did say this was going to be a dark section. So let's just go ahead and change the background and the text. Uh, again, these are the buttons. We want that ghost button. So we've got that second button selected. I'm going to close out of this view. We're going to do outline. And because the group actually, uh, we specified the whole group to have white text, it automatically inherits that. So uh, really quickly, what I'm going to do now is save draft and we can see what things look like. Now you can see here, we've got, uh, this is off here to the left and there's like a little bit of extra spacing here. Uh, and the reason behind that is uh, in the row block, there is an option over here in the justification. Right now it's all sort of by default aligning left. Uh, if you do what's called space between, what it does is it moves everything. If you've got like two items in there, one to the left, one to the right, uh, I'll save draft and we can see how this looks. You can see how that came across. I think my row block might have some spacing. Hmm, maybe not. Uh, okay, so Mark asks, fixed is a max width, not a width. Yeah, so let's do a quick um, inspect and we can see exactly what it does. Um, in that case, what it does is um, it's using flex. And so it says um, it gives the container 720 pixels. You can see it all outlined. Uh, obviously, we can, I'll, I'll hack this so you can see it move if we wanted to make it smaller. Uh, and so, yes, that does ultimately bring into a max width. So, like, if you were to remove, like, reduce your screen, uh, it wouldn't stay that hard number 720 because then it would break on mobile. So, basically, it's saying, 
make this section maximum width 720 as it scrolls down, respect uh, everything that's there. Uh, Lisa, I see your question. Are any of these things as you presenting available as patterns in Frost? Yes, uh, they are actually. Uh, yes, Mark, maybe that's an opportunity for us to uh, do a pull request or a, an issue in GitHub because that sh that probably should be clear because uh, it does say specify fixed width. Uh, you are correct. Um, so Lisa, in short, and I'll do a quick kind of 20 second break to show the patterns that are inside of Frost. Um, some of these call to actions are available as patterns. Uh, I don't think maybe I'm wrong. I don't think the one, two, three, four section came in as patterns. Um, just looking through. Yeah. All right, so now we want to go to this next section. Any other questions before I move on? So we're going to do uh, another section here. This is kind of like a view our work sort of or portfolio. Uh, and we'll have the opportunity here to do uh, the duplication uh, again. So I'll build this one, and then we'll see what happens. Uh, so we're going to come down here to the bottom of the page. We're going to add our group. We want to make the group full width. And we want to zero out the margin again. On top of that, that goes away, you see there. Uh, now, this is going to be a little bit different because um, let me see how I just double check how I built that here. OK, so columns. OK, so what we're going to do here, um, this is a spacing. Sorry, I keep toggling around. This is a spacing thing. So this from here over to here uh, is not the the content width that is by default, 640 pixels, nor is it something that's 1,200 pixels that would go, for instance, from here to here. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I've got the group selected. And if you go to the settings here, uh, you can specify what you want the inner wrapper to be. And so I'm going to select 960 pixels because what that does is it allows... Uh, as you can see here, it, it's not the full width. It's not the wide width. It's sort of a specific width. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and add the heading first. View our work. Oops. And let me go ahead and do my padding, which I forgot again. Uh, we want to center that. Uh, leaving it an H2 is fine. Uh, come down here, make that 60 pixels. We've got our little bit of subtext. And in this case, I'm going to reduce the spacing above the paragraph to line up. You can see, line up a little bit closer. And then uh, what we want to do is we want to set up um, a set of columns here. So underneath this, we're going to add columns. Uh, 50, 50 is fine. So on one side, we've got an image, which image do I have the stairwell? So I'm just going to go add an image, which I've thankfully already got here. That's the stairwell. And then on the right side, I'm going to do a quick copy and paste. So maybe we want to do a heading, I think Fountain Valley, California. Uh, we want that maybe to be an H3, because this is an H2 right here. Uh, and so after that, we got a little bit of text, and then we've got a, a get started button. So we'll do this. Uh, and again, you could copy that character code if you wanted to. Uh, I'm going to see if there's any formatting that needs to take place. The Fountain Valley, this looks like we've got a little bit bigger font size, maybe 30 pixels. Now, one thing the columns block allows you to do is you can see everything is top aligned by default. Uh, and on the demo here, you can see that this section uh, looks like it's vertically centered. So uh, there's an option here for columns, basically says align middle. You can see how that goes down for whatever reason you wanted to align at the bottom, you could. That might be an interesting design choice depending on how you want to do things. Uh, so I'm going to do that. 
Now also notice in between the text here and the image is the 30 pixels block app that comes by default. In this case, you can see there's more. And so what we'll do is we'll change the block gap here. Maybe we'll go to large. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save draft. We can see how things look. Um, and let us take some top margin on the columns, space it out a little bit better. Uh, and this looks awfully. Once again, I will save the draft so we can see. So we've made some spacing here, which kind of gives this some space. Now, as you can see on the demo, we've got three sections alternating. Uh, this is left and right. Uh, and so what I'm gonna do is um, just for the sake of shorthanding, so I'm gonna take the columns block and I'm gonna duplicate it. And I'm gonna just duplicate it again, right? Cause we've got three sections. Now, one thing that's really cool with uh, WordPress is if you want to take this, We'll just select the image here. Uh, if you So basically we've got the column inside of the columns block selected. So we want this whole column. If you go up here to the arrow, you could just say move right. And so what it does is it just flip flops the columns, uh, which gives you sort of that, um, this staggered look. Now I'm gonna show you a little caveat. Uh, I see that there's an issue in WordPress maybe to address this. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna, as I refresh, uh, and I'm going to pull this out so we can see what this, how this works on mobile. Um, so by default, WordPress columns load left to right on mobile. So this would be image, then the text underneath it. But then you get to a section like this and you're like, well, I don't really want then the text to go on top of the image because that's not how it looks. And that's what would happen. As you see here, it would then kind of do that. Now, um, Frost has... If you select the columns block, I added a block style that says reverse over here. And what that does is it um, adds a class. This is kind of getting into the weeds. It adds a is style columns reverse class to that columns. And then there's media query set up in the style sheet to basically say flip them when it's on mobile. So if I were to hit save draft and we were to go back and pull this out, now we've got this section loading as we want. So it basically reversed the column order load under a certain media query. Uh, again, I believe that there's an issue in WordPress to have that be a native setting, but for now uh, it's a very easy setting through the block style. Uh, and so looking at our demo, we just went ahead. I won't go through and change and update the pictures and text because don't need to do that. Uh, but now we've designed this section uh, to have that sort of alternating thing. Um, and then underneath that, uh, we've got a similar call to action. Uh, so instead of rebuilding it, uh, we can go here. We want to select the group. We just want to duplicate the group and it does exactly what it should. And over here, you can see the arrows. So that basically moves it underneath the group. You can do that up and down. Uh, you could also here in list view, you could take this and drag that up if you wanted to. Uh, again, these are once you understand how these things work and how easy it is to kind of slide things around, uh, all of a sudden you realize just how powerful uh, the editor is becoming. So uh, go ahead and hit save. And now we've got our call to action. And I believe there's um, one more section, meet the team. Um, uh, so we'll just go ahead. Uh, now as a shorthand, and I, I do this often, let me set up my group first. So we've got a group. We want this to be full width. Again, just adding paddings, kind of getting this all set up. We zero out the top margin, so that butts up. Now I'm gonna show everyone a trick here. So right here, we've got this heading in this paragraph. If I go to list view, um, I can multi-select the two, come here and just hit copy blocks. Um, and then I can come down into my group and kind of just do a paste and it'll paste it away. Uh, so for instance, so we've got meet the team and then we've got something different here. This is, a, then we could just do meet the team and then we'll just do that. Uh, similarly, you could 
do something like this, you could duplicate it and then drag these two out and into the group. So there's um, some some really kind of good workflows that are now being capable. Uh, Laura asks, uh, yes, Elisa, I'll show I'll show I've got a, a little sneaky thing to show here at the end. Uh, could you make your group and settings into a pattern? Um, you could. Uh, you're kind of getting into uh, synced blocks and um, uh, reusable blocks and things like that, unsynced, whatever. Um, in this case, it's, you know, if it's just building out a page, I would um, I would just do like a copy and paste. Like I don't need to have that stored anywhere else because I'm going to use it for is just in this one instance. So uh, I use copy and paste quite a bit. I don't go through the hassle of like building it into a pattern unless I, it's something that I want to use down the road. Uh, and I, I know further down, I'm going to use it. So, uh, okay. So we've got meet the team. And then we basically got this section here, which is just basically four columns. Um, uh, so I'm just going to go into the group, add the columns block. Uh, again, I'm going to start 50, 50. Uh, I'm going to make sure that this alignment is also wide width. You can see that stretch out. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just build one of these. Um, and then we can just duplicate it over and swap things out. So the first thing I'm going to do is add an image. Uh, who do we have here? Caitlin. So we've got Caitlin. And inside of the column, we're going to add a heading. Oops. Paragraph below it, and then view profile button. Now, uh, button. I'm going to hit save so we can see how things look. This is a 50 50 right now. So, a um, couple things we want to do here is just get some of the formatting down just a little bit. Um, and then, so for instance, we want to uh, change this to an H3. We want to do this. We want to center the button. And again, I'm going to select everything in here and I'm going to uh, change the block spacing so that it's a little bit tighter. Maybe we'll just even do 10 pixels. Uh, and I'll, I'm going to go to the heading because I want more spacing here. So I'm selecting the heading and I'm going to margin and I'm going to do top margin. Maybe I want to do something like that. Uh, the image itself also should be centered. Uh, so we will go ahead and do a line center. And I'm going to take this column and I'm just going to duplicate it again. We're just going to do this. Uh, we've got that extra column we started with. And so uh, as I save draft, uh, let's do this. Forgot to, and I'll show you the uh, copy styles. Okay, so what I did was I changed the paragraph. Uh, I reduced the line height in this paragraph and also the checks. So if I'm inside of the paragraph and I do um, copy styles and then I come over to this one and do the same thing and do, oh, I'm on local. Ah, one, one little snafu, see? Well, we'll just, this isn't that big of a deal. We'll just do this, add the line height. There are always little gotchas. And uh, I don't remember what order they were in, but. And then of course you can just update the text as well. Uh, all that kind of a stuff. Uh, so if I were to hit save, we could do a quick. Uh, yes, Sherry, to your point, I think there's a, a, a weird, the, the copy styles that require some sort of a, a permissions thing. So like on local, it doesn't exactly work, but if yes, you were inside of a regular hosting environment, uh, I think there a little dialogue box comes up that asks you, Hey, do you want to do this? And you would just say yes. And then it would work. So, um, yes, pasting the style and that, that copy and paste in that case, wasn't all that helpful because it was only one or two styles that we were changing. But if you've got things that are like four or five or six styles, it's just very easy to then copy the, 
um, the styles over. So uh, we were going to just do that. And you can see our team page, some of the spacing's off, but uh, I think you guys get the point. And that is um, top to bottom how we built this. Now, Alisa points out something that's new to WordPress 6.4. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into list view. Remember, we created groups for all of these layers. Um, and for those of you who are in Figma or use Figma, you know that these types of things would be super easy um, and super helpful as you navigate them, especially if there's more groups um, to be able to do what I'm going to show you here. If you select the group, you can say hero. And it changes the group label. And so maybe here, we're just going to call this numbers. Oops. And then all the way down, this would be a call to action. And I'll just do a few more while we've got some time. Uh, it's helpful, not only as you, the developer designer to go through and to just be able to say, okay, where's the group I need to find. Uh, but even for clients, if they, you know, if you train them on how to do some editing uh, and they know how to go into list view, uh, they can just say, Hey, I'm going to, I need to get to the number section. I got to tweak something there uh, or the call to action. And then that comes up and then gets highlighted. So uh, those are, these are all little helpful things. Uh, WordPress 6.4 dropped yesterday, that feature, this ability to change, um, as well. Uh, it's not just limited, uh, pattern columns. Oh, maybe it is groups. Um, this feature, the ability to rename groups is, uh, new to WordPress 6.4. Uh, and it's a lot of the workflow, uh, you, you may hear that being tossed around in WordPress right now. They're sort of in the, the workflow um, part of the, the phasing on building out the editor where a lot of the functionality is there, the styles and settings are there. Now people are using it. Like what would be more helpful and how do we you know enable uh, users and builders to kind of customize this experience like we're doing here with the groups? Um, so... Uh, that's work that's just sort of ongoing and being done, uh, fine tuning things over here, UIs and stuff like that, uh, based on user feedback is happening as well. So, uh, one thing I want to just show now that we're using frost. So, uh, by default, you may have noticed the main frost website is uh, a blue color scheme and WordPress has inside of black themes, the ability to have what's called black styles or uh, style variations, excuse me. And so if you go into the site editor, uh, there, if the theme has styles and Frost has eight of them, uh, this up here is the default blue, but in this case, I've used teal. Um, anywhere where your color palette has been sort of defined, uh, these styles can, through theme JSON, you could determine the, the different um, hex codes that you want changed. So you'll see as I click through, the primary and secondary colors inside of each variation, uh, as long as you use them, uh, they change along with it. So you can do stuff like this uh, as well. It's kind of a, a fun little thing um, as well. That's part of WordPress um, site editor. So kind of fun just to see what different things look like. Uh, I do like the magenta, but I was a fan of magenta. So we'll just do a quick refresh and all of a sudden you can change that. So, and that is what I have. Like I said, um, I'm using local right now to sort of just toy around with this. So um, what you can do is uh, if you use local, you can grab that zip file, uh, create a new site, literally just drag it over and it'll create a new site. And uh, as soon as you do that, you'll have exactly what we're looking at here. Copies everything over. Uh, sets it up so you could go in and just uh, pick it apart or use it as a learning experience. I do that often. Uh, I pull themes down from the WordPress repository as well, uh, open up theme files to see how people are doing things. It truly is the best way to learn. So um, workshops like this are helpful because it, it's sort of like a real world uh, interpretation of how this can be done. Uh, but sometimes if you're into the weeds and like to do code stuff, uh, that's a great place to do it is just to pull things down. So uh, I've got some time here. We've got time left here, uh, 10 minutes or so. I'm happy to go off of screen share and we can just, uh, if there's any questions that you have relative to uh, building home pages or um, just in general, uh, I'd love to stick around and answer any of them. And again, like I said, this is going to be, this is recorded and will be 
um, on our YouTube channel.